Mr. Herman drew a regular decagon inscribed in a circle. He then added an inscribed angle to his diagram. The angle intercepted just one of the arcs formed by his decagon. What is the measure of the angle? So to understand what's going on here, we're going to have to first draw in our decagon. When we say inscribed in the circle, it, it works very similar to inscribed angle where the vertex is on the circle itself. If a decagon is inscribed in a circle, all the vertices are actually on the circle. Since it's a decagon, we know there has to be 10 of them. So I'm going to just draw 10 vertices as evenly spaced as I can. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So those are the vertices of the decagon. Now I can actually draw in the sides. And there's my regular decagon. Now he added an inscribed angle to his diagram. The, this angle intercepted just one of the arcs formed by the decagon. So we have some sort of inscribed angle. Doesn't say where it is. So I'll just draw it here. And it's intercepting one of these arcs formed by the decagon. What is the measure of this angle? Important thing to keep in mind here, and it might be easier to think about this idea with the triangle. If we have an equilateral triangle, all three of these chords are congruent. It's going to cut this arc, the entire circle, up into three congruent arcs. If the chord is congruent, the arcs it cuts off have to be congruent. So here we have uh, 10 congruent chords, and the entire measure of this circle is 360 degrees. So we have 360 divided evenly between 10 different parts. So each of these arcs have a measure of 36 degrees. Because 36 times 10 is going to be what it takes to get to 360. Now this inscribed angle is cutting off one of these arcs. And the relationship between an inscribed angle and the arc that it intercepts is that the inscribed angle is half of the arc. So this angle is going to equal half of 36, which is 18 degrees.